This is an extract from a one hour interview. To watch the full interview, you can click below to join the Get Gallery Ready course. Until then, enjoy the video. Hi, Charlotte. Thanks for joining. So just to introduce you to anybody watching, you are a fine artist working across a range of media and your work focuses on the silhouette and the female figure. You work with primarily a gallery called Jagged Art, and we're going to go more into that. You are also a professor. You exhibit in the UK and internationally, but I'm sure you'll be able to tell the people a lot better than I just did. Um, yeah, I'm an artist working in a, as you say, in a range of materials. And I started as a painter. I trained as a painter, even though I work on a number of substrates. I work on ceramic. I work in paper cut. I've worked in glass. I've even made animation. My work is informed by my experience as a painter. As we were talking about earlier, my work does cross into the decorative arts, the applied arts, and craft practice is hugely important within my work and my making process. My work has a very strong element of collage, whatever substrate I'm working on, and also drawing. Drawing is absolutely fundamental to, to the way I, I make my work, how I start my ideas, how I put the ideas together. How did you get started with Jagged Art? And it, was that the first commercial gallery that you had a ongoing relationship with? When I left college, a few years after leaving college, I, I had an actually an introduction to the Eagle Gallery. So I didn't approach her cold. It meant that the person who introduced me had already, in a sense, matched me up and, and thought that kind of relationship would work and that I would fit in to that gallery. I'm grateful to her because she gave me my first show in the early 90s. Um, so that was the first gallery. And then I um, moved to the Marlborough Gallery, which is a much bigger gallery. It's international. Now it's folded. But at the time, it was about, I think I did the show there in 2009, following actually a museum show that I did in the Wallace Collection. And then maybe that's quite a good sort of example, because I think it was probably the result of that pro project that I did, because I was two years as associate artist at the Wallace Collection. And so I did a lot of work around the 18th century paintings and the say of porcelain. That was when I first started looking in depth at that work. And I think it was off the back of that museum show that the Marlborough then picked up on it. So it worked the other way in the sense that su the success of the public museum exposure facilitated a commercial gallery's interest. I only did one show with them. And then, and I learned a lot actually about uh, the priorities of a gallery because some of the very large galleries are completely orientated towards uh, the business model and you are um, sort of part of that and I was very conscious about the way a gallery like the Marlborough Gallery works in a completely different way to Jagged Up who I'm working with because the Marlborough Gallery is a gallery with I mean most, a lot of their money comes in from the sort of secondary market I mean they're dealing with sort of Picassos and Louise Bourgeois so <clears throat> a young artist coming into a huge gallery um, certainly at the beginning isn't necessarily a big uh, money spinner for them. Although having said that, I think things have changed now. I'm talking about my generation. I think the younger generation, I think that people can come in like running. I think I was slow burn. And then Andrea from Jagged Art had actually worked with um, Emma Hill. And so many years later, Jagged Art had seen my exhibition at the Wallace Collection, which is around the corner, and, and then contacted me. And that was a long time later. I've probably been working with Jagged Art almost since they began. And Jagged Art's very interesting because obviously a very different kind of gallery. It's a gallery with one or two people. So it's a completely different enterprise. But my experience in Jagged Art has been amazing because she's very focused on supporting you as an artist and being involved. Wow. You've just covered... It's so much. I've made notes because there's so much that I want to pick your brains on. So you said a few years after coming out of art school, you had an introduction to Emma Hill at Eagle Gallery in London. And I think one of the things that obviously we touch on in this course is this idea of 
how do you get on a gallery's radar and that it's sort of a three-step process, isn't it? It's doing your research, being ready and networking. And you will maximize your chances of approaching a gallery of getting noticed through these relationships. And because to this day, recommendations either from an artist that they already have a relationship with or from a colleague or from a critic that goes such a long way so I I, I sort of wanted to pick up on those distinctions between the different types of gallery where we're talking about an international in the case of Marlborough where they have locations in London in New York in Madrid, where they have a big roster of artists, but also that sort of secondary market activity as well. And also a big international team. I mean, they're going to have directors in London, in New York, in Madrid, in Barcelona. Those people are going to have staff. It's a different type of operation versus the gallery where you're working with now, which is two directors. They have people coming in to help when they have shows, but they're running everything. And that means there's advantages to both. Obviously, we're not knocking one or the other, but that means that you have this close sort of personal relationship and they can have that one person really has a deep understanding of your practice. And it's a partnership in a way, isn't it? Yeah, I think any gallery, even the big galleries have to be a partnership. I think it depends on what you're looking for from a gallery and what suits the way you work, the kind of work you do, the amount of work that you produce, how productive you are. And it's actually, it requires quite a bit of self-knowledge to understand how your own work fits and how you would like your own work to fit. And sometimes there's a schism, but perhaps particularly when you're a younger artist, one has the idea that the gallery is going to solve all your problems and the ultimate is getting a gallery. And the gallery doesn't actually solve your problems. The gallery just gives you new ones. So it's good, new challenges, but it can be also problematical. Yeah, and this sort of makes me think about about this quote that whether you're broke or whether you've got no money at all or whether you're a millionaire or a billionaire you still have problems you still have financial problems you just get better problems yeah it it, it sort of reminds me of that where the gallery isn't going to magically make all your problems disappear and if anything the things of the admin, the marketing, you still have to be organized on these things because you have that expectation on the other side of, you can't just rock up and be like, okay, guys, have you done my marketing today? Yeah, I think that's right. And also if you do suddenly get a gallery, you can't then sit back and say, oh, that's great. I've got a gallery. They'll do it all. You're absolutely right. And they want an artist who is proactive in sort of promoting themselves, networking. And some galleries will take you because they know you've got a good kind of mailing list. And then other galleries are more idealistic and also might take artists who they're really, but they think I might not sell any at the moment or it might take a while. And that's quite hard for them because they're investing in artists who they think are going to sell or they think are going to develop, but that's a sort of judgment call on their part. So it's quite an act of faith for a gallery to take on an artist. Sometimes what they do actually is, um, I think it's most likely that they don't take you on immediately. They might show you in a group show and then see how things go, see how your relationship with them develops. It's very unlikely, although it's possible, that they suddenly just give you a one-person show and you're a star. It can happen, but that's usually the case, that they they put their toe in the water and try you out. Thank you for watching this clip from our interview. To watch the full one-hour interview and get practical advice to work with galleries, click the link below and join the Get Gallery Ready course. This in-depth course for artists includes five sessions covering everything you need to know about galleries, five interviews with artists sharing their top tips with you, and five interviews with gallery directors so you can hear directly what they look for, how to approach them, how to get represented by a gallery, and so much more.
Until then, we hope you enjoyed this video and you can click below to learn more and get started.